Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the uh, Pimlico cards, the Pimlico cards, for uh, both Black Eyed Susan Day and Preakness Steaks Day, Friday and Saturday, May 20th and 21st. And similarly to the way we did the Kentucky Derby, it is kind of a two-day uh, card. Um, it, the the way these big, you know, these big uh, uh, festivals uh, happen. Uh, you do have the Friday before the Saturday that culminates in kind of a Philly stakes race that kind of mirrors the, the male stakes race on Saturday. So as a kind of traditionalist and as a fan, I do want to uh, highlight both cards. But even as a gambler, it's important to look at both cards because you get extremely increased attendance at both of these um, both of these days. And what that means is you're going to have a whole bunch of public money in, which makes these, you know, probably the two best betting cards in general at, at the whole meet, which is why I'm more than happy to, you know, to review all this stuff for you. And also because the pools are so big that, you know, I'm not giving any of my own edge away by doing this, you know, because you guys are not going to really, you know, going to be able to affect my price all that much anyway. Um, so again, you know, for true DFS subscribers, I, I'm more than happy to do this. Eventually this is going to be premium. I, I just, I'm just a little lazy to get that set up. Um, and I guess even so, if you're finding this on YouTube, probably, um, probably catching it for free anyway, but that's okay. Um, that, that's all right for now. The other thing I'm going to do is I might actually use the sheets in the, uh, as, as part of the screen share. Uh, when I, we did the Derby analysis, a couple of people commented that they really appreciated that, and they were able to understand what I was talking about when I was you know, going over where the data came from. So maybe if I remember, I will pull a couple of sheets in here to show where these, or, you know, where, where this analysis comes from. Um, now, my usual disclaimers uh, with respect to all of my horse racing picks is that, look, this is being done early. And in, in general, you really don't even want to make any bets until, you know, basically five minutes to post. But, you know, this is the best I'm going to do. And I'm going to try to do the best that I can to give you an idea of what these horses will be odds wise, and hopefully give you a kind of a range such that, well, I like this horse at 10 to one, but not at five and something like that. But there are some horses that I know are just going to be long. Um, you'll, you'll, I, th I think you guys are big boys, <laughs> big girls, and you know what I'm kind of getting at here. I'm going to do my best to give you an idea of what to bet, but if these odds are much worse than I'm kind of anticipating, then you got to have to make those own decisions on your own. Um, cause I'm not going to be doing a live stream during the course of the, of the day. So let's just start with uh, today and in race number one. Uh, right off the bat, I have three very, very strong values. Um, one is the four, FOMO. Um, the second horse is the six, Prince Perry. And the third horse is the 12, uh, Billings Gate. Um, it's not as though I think they're locks or anything like that, but I feel as though that they have just as good of a chance to win as some of these favorites in this race. Um, and as a result... Um, you know, that, that's, that's where you, that's where you find value. Um, for example, I mean, I'll, I'll show you. So let, let's take a look at this race as, as an example, because there are going to be some races where there's like kind of standout long shots, but here's just kind of a value long shot. So you look at Billings gate, right. And remember we're, we're, we're trying to think about the, the, the lower number, the better. Okay. So you'll look at here and he's got an 18 in his last race. And if you look into last year, he has a 15. You want to ignore these other two because this is a turf race, C5T. And these two races were not on the turf. So we're only going to look at the turf races. So it's got a 15 and 18. And as you look through the rest of these horses, it's just extremely competitive. You know, Detroit City is probably one of the favorites. And he's no better than 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 Billy Skate. Um, Prince Perry, you know, it's I got a 14 and a tens last year. I mean, this is extremely strong. And when you just kind of look through the race here, and there's FOMO at 15, there's really nobody that's even better than these horses at all. In other words, I, I would actually go so far to say that it's not just 
these horses in this race are better than are, are as good as the favorites. I, I just think they're actually the three most likely winners. Um, you know, you're getting that at 10 to one and maybe 30 to one and 10 to one. I mean, it's not that they're locks or anything like that, but, but, but that's what you have to do in horse racing is, is play values like this. Um, and Detroit city, as I mentioned before, he's probably the next horse. Um, but, uh, as as the favorite, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. You know, uh, let's let me just double check these other favorites on the outside. So like hard to be humble, for example, like hard to be humble if he even draws in. I mean, yes, he's a little bit better, right? He's got a ten, he's got a fourteen, but not that much better. And and, and when you consider that he's going to be on the outside, that that makes up for usually like a point you know, at least depending how wide the horse is going to be. So, so right out of the gate, I think you have some really, really strong values. here. Um, race number two, uh, again, I, I, I feel as though this race is another one with uh, some really, really strong value. Um, so let's look at this. Let's, let's take a look. So I'm not going to do this really for every race, but the thing about this race is that the two favorites are first time starters, run Reagan run and St. Arrow's girl. And I personally like to fade horses like this that are well bet first time starters. I, I just feel as though that they just take more money than they really should. Um, there's a lot of hype associated with kind of good first time starters. And I think that they're usually over bet. So I'll look at a horse like, you know, utterly courageous miss midnight. They both have 22s. Um, like a 20 and a 22. And I, and I find that uh, that's probably, well, that's probably going to be good enough to be an okay first time starter. You know, it's not going to be good enough to be a, you know, a really good first time starter. So if these horses come out and really, really pop, then they're just going to get dusted. Right. I mean, not there. I mean, our horse is going to get dusted, but if they don't show up, I mean, they're just first time starters. You know, some horses just train well, just don't run. Um, I just think that you're probably supposed to take the odds. And the other thing is that the eight horse, Miss Midnight, is carrying only 107 pounds. And, you know, you, minds might, you know, uh, opinions differ, but according to sheet theory, if, if, if you are low weight, each five pounds is worth like a full point. So if Miss Midnight is getting, uh, well, first of all, three full points from Utterly Courageous. Um, Miss Midnight is, you know, going to run the equivalent of, say, even compared to Run Reagan Run, it's going to run the equivalent of, of, of like a 20 as opposed to a 22. So it makes it a little harder for these first time starters to be good enough to win. Um, so it's not as if the six and the eight are locks. And I still would use actually the first time starters here, um, the one, the two, and the five if I'm going to use those first race long shots, right? Cause it's like DFS I mean, it's not just picking the right horse, it's picking the right best overall bet. So I would use in the first race, those three long shots and probably use most of these. Um, but if you are not, you know, let's say you play the first race and you lose, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the first time stars to start off new bets, maybe. Right. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to that as we get to kind of later races in the card. Um, so let's go on to race number three and race three is, I think there's kind of a lock here as the favorite and, and you can, you can take that, you know, it depends on your risk tolerance here. Um, but I'll just show you. So you, you look down these horses and King Vega is running an 11 on the turf. And that's after running 12s in Europe. I mean, this is. I mean, there's really nothing to compete with this. I mean, the honorable one has an 11, but that's on the dirt, you know, and then Roin with a 15. It's it's going to be extremely difficult to beat this horse. So you have to make a decision on what you want to do with that. You know, you could either you could either use it to kind of make the rest of your kind of you know, multi-leg parlays and multi-leg races uh, wagers work, or you could just not bet the race. Um it's going to be four to five. 
I mean, this three to one odds is kind of a joke. I, I promise you, this is not going to be three to one. I mean, if you get three to one, you know, go for it. But um, it's, I would not try to beat this horse. Let's just put it that way. All right. Um, race number four. Race four, I highlighted the uh, the one. And let me just double check it. This is one of the things I'm, I'm kind of happy about. It gives me a chance to double check my work here because I'm going through it with you guys. Um, Uncle Iris has an 11 and it's, it's, it's good and bad. In other words, it made a big move from its previous races. You know, it was running 19s, 23s, 16s, 18s, and it made a big move to an 11. And it's good in that it's developing and, and whatever. But usually when a horse makes a huge move like that, it tends to react negatively. So I don't think I'm going to end up betting it um, as the favorite. I mean, it's probably going to be the favorite. And I usually don't like to bet kind of bouncy horses. And that's what it means when you run a really, really big effort. And then you have to, um, you know, then, then you come back uh, with your next race. It's called bouncing. Um, and I talk about this when I talk about DFS, when, when, when guys come off of ceiling performances, you want to fade them in their next start. Um, so, um, uh, so yeah, uh, th that's my comment on this race is that I, the one is probably the fastest horse, but because it's a kind of a bouncer probably won't end up betting it. I probably won't end up betting the race. Um, okay. Let's move on to race number five. Um, race number five, I actually do have some value here, and that's going to be the one valued notion and the nine papal law. And just to kind of show you where this comes from. So you have value notion, again, who's running a 13 um, uh, on the turf, and it's a turf race. So, and you compare that with these other horses. I mean, Vulcan is running fast, but it's not really on the turf. Not away hasn't really been on the turf in a long time. I mean, it's got a chance, but this is this is tough to bet a seven year old like this. Um, and then everybody else, I mean, love you so much is off a big layoff. Um, w Springtime not even hasn't been on the turf. Comedy Town hasn't been on the turf. Coop tries harder. I mean, possible. You know, it's got a fourteen, then a twelve on the dirt, but then now it's taking a little time off as a seven year old. As a, I don't know, but papal law, and it's got a 12 and it's got a 13. And yeah, it's got a little layoff and it's, it's got a pretty decent layoff and it's a nine year old. So look, make no mistake. These are pretty crippled horses in general. Um, not really, not really reliable to say the least, but given the prices, I would go with those two horses. I, I would go with the one value notion and the nine papal law. And once again, you're seeing the nine getting a weight break, you know, at 116 pounds. So you know, these are kind of older horses. Um, and remember, five furlongs on the turf, anything can happen. You know, you, you, you stumble out of the gate, you're dead, pretty much. Um, especially if you got the one, you know, because you, you stumble and then everybody cuts you off and it's a, it's a horror show. But um, that's, what I, that's what I'm doing. I think the one and the nine are really, really good values there. And that's what I think I'm going to recommend. All right. Um, so I guess from a betting perspective, I and mean, if you wanted to do something, I mean, maybe we could talk a little bit about this. I mean, you, you could play the four, six, and the 12 in race one. If you want to do a pick five, you the four, six, and 12 in race one. You don't take too much of a stand in race two, and you play most of those horses I brought up. Then if you wanted to, well, the problem is, is, is you're running into issues race four. Because although you could take this chalk in race three, race four, I really think is kind of fishy. Um, so I don't know about the, this pick five here. Um, and it kind of happens that way, um, that sometimes you just don't get what you want. So race five is, 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 is a good way to start off a new set of bets, I guess. All right. Race number six, uh, unfortunately looks as though that's not a great betting race at all. Um, I think the two is kind of a, just okay favorite, but three, the five, the six and the eight are just kind of okay. So I want, I'm not going to show the sheets for this race. It's just kind of a kind of an overall bad betting race. So I'm probably going to end up passing over there. 
Um, let's look at race number seven because I did mark down as I thought the favorite was really solid. So let me let me take another look at it because whenever I think the rate the favorite is solid, I want to give it another look because I don't like betting favorites. So let's take a look. So English Tavern, uh, we're looking at turf race, uh, not so much. Of, so Mandate I thought was really strong. So let's take a look. So yeah, it's got a nine and it's got other nines. So I'm I'm gonna probably probably predict that it runs another nine. And the reason why is that even though you know, I, it, horses do tend to bounce off of big moves, the fact is these two races were kind of what this means is P means a pace race, which means it was a slow pace. So those races, I mean, you probably can add a little bit to their result. In other words, I, he probably could have run better than the 15 uh, in, in those races, um, but only because it was a slow pace, it kind of held up. So uh, I think this is an extremely strong favorite here. Um, I don't think anybody in here is going to run a nine. American Dioro is not probably the next best. Let's see what his price is, because that could definitely go forward here. Um, let me just make sure there's nobody else before I go back and look at his odds. Yeah, so let's take a look. Healing, not quite. So let's take another look at, at American Dioro's odds are, uh, what their odds are, what his odds are. Um, yeah, American Dioro at 12 to 1. That That's something that I would do. And I'm glad I took another look at this one because I originally just marked down the two, but I think that I think the four is really live here, actually. So what I would do is probably box the four too. And I would I would use the four here at twelve to one. I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's a little bit worse than the two, but not that much, and it's kind of an improving horse. So I I would I would definitely consider that. Um, okay, so race eight. Uh, uh, I want to go through this again because I marked down the three at 20 to one as somebody to somebody worth, worth uh, keying here. So let's just take a look before we even look at the sheets and you'll, you'll see that it's got a six pound weight break. So we're already getting a point um, from everybody. Let's just take a look. Um, okay. So race eight, let's see if it's any worse than the others. I guess that's what I was getting at. Exotic West is going to, you know, probably running 12s. Into vanishing, maybe a little slower. 13s up to 14s. All right. And click to confirm. This is this is this is the horse. I mean, it does look great, right? It's 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 running 19s and it, but it just keeps on moving forward. Now 25, 22, 22, 19, 16, 13. So it have one more move ahead of in him. I don't know. Um, super quick's got an 11. Uh, so it's gonna probably gonna run another 11 or 13. Little King's Princess looks really, really solid. So Frost Point, 12 points. So, so yeah, it is a little fishy, to say the least, the super quick. But I, uh, excuse me, uh, click to confirm. But at 20 to 1, I think it, I think it's worth a shot. Um, is it going to be 20 to 1? I don't know, maybe. So if you do get 20 to 1, I, I definitely think it wins more than 1 out of 20 times. So, but the reality, I probably would use all those horses. Right? I'd probably use one, three, four, five, six. I wouldn't use the two, but um, um, if you want to take a shot, yeah, I think click to confirm is fine. I don't think it's a locker. I, I wouldn't key it really. Um, and then once again, I'm glad I kind of went through it again. Okay, race number nine. Wow. So race number nine again. Um, I just wanted to show you what I what I wrote down, and then I want to go back to it. I actually like the one, Determined Gold, to either beat the four, who's going to be a big favorite, or at least to come in second in the exact is. Let me take another look at it and see. So Determined Gold is, you know, it, it ran an 11, and then it ran a 15. So it's an improving horse. And here's actually a good example of what I was talking about. So it ran a 23 and a 27 and a 22. And it ran 11. And this is what happens usually to horses that run big new tops like that is it, they do react, they do bounce. So this 15 was expected. And it's very possible this horse can, can slingshot and run like a nine. And at 20 to one, I mean, let's see if that's going to be good enough. So well, Lady Poochie's terrible. Hail two's terrible. So Pizza Bianca 
is and look, it's super solid. It's running a 13, 11, 11. But like I said, if that determined gold can slingshot and run a nine or an 11, that's an extremely long, long, extremely live long shot there. So, and there's nobody else that can do anything in this race. Um, so yeah, I, I second myself on this one. I, this is extremely strong. I, I would, I would, I would use, I would box the one four. Um, four is really tough. You know, I, I don't think the four is going to be out of the money here, but, and if the four, you know, and look, the one can run a, gr- a good race and still lose to the four. So I would box the two of those in the exact as I think the one is extremely strong, uh, uh, extremely live long shot here. Um, okay, race number 10. So I wrote down the three and the four over the two. So before I look into it, I was, I guess, I felt as though the two was an okay favorite, but I thought the three and the four could beat it. And then I tossed this horse at five to two. So let's go back and take a look and see if the numbers support this. So very little sense with 13, but not bad. Then you have under the stars. I guess this was the favorite, right? So, I mean, this is extremely strong. You know, it's got 11 and 11, 11 minus. I don't like this 18. Um, I wouldn't have made this horse to bounce like this, but I'll give it a little bit of a break because because of the distance. And now it's going back to sprinting. So it's 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 fine, but it's not a lock or anything like that. So I guess that's why I was trying to beat it. Let's see what else there is here. So yeah, this is my type of thing. So Lady Scarlet, same, same deal. So remember like the that last race we talked about? So it had a 17 and then a 14, then it ran a nine, and then it, it bounced like it's supposed to. So if this thing rows forward again, it's totally live here to run another nine, which, which wins this race, probably. And then La Casa de Oro, um, it's lightly raced. It ran a 10. Um, it, 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 it might bounce. Um, so it's not like a lock or anything like that. But again, it, as, if it's not the favorite, I'll definitely, I would definitely use it to beat that favorite. And then Saucy Lady T. So this is Happy Soul. Now, this, this is kind of a dangerous five to two shot to bet against. And the reason why, not to get too much into sheet theory here, but these numbers here, the 15 and the 18, are much stronger than they appear because when you run these numbers early, and what this this indicates that it's kind of an early two-year-old number because it's early in the calendar year, that's really strong. I mean, you expect this horse to improve even maybe even more than this 13 would show. And this bounce to 25, you know, makes some, some sense, especially because it's um, it was at a distance and now it's back to sprinting. So this is a kind of a tougher fade than, than, than I at first thought. Um, so I probably will end up using this one. Um, uh, but La Casa de Oro, good little middling five to six to one shot. Lady Scarlet, pretty decent middling five to six to one, six to one shot. And the two is an okay favorite, an okay horse, but I don't think it's the favorite. It's worth fearing. Um, so I think kind of reading myself and reading my, my reanalysis of the race, I think that I might use, just use them all, you know, depending on what else they got going on. So I think that two, three, four, six, I think they're all okay. Um, I'm not going to take a big stand on this race. I guess that's my, my reanalysis. Uh, race 11, definitely no bet. Uh, I'll just read you what I had. Two, three, eight, nine, 10, 11. You want to use them all? Go ahead, use them all. But um, we're not even going to go over that. Okay, so race number 12. I, I'll, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll tell you what I wrote down. I wrote down the five um, at 12 to one over the two favorites, the one and the three. So now I want to go back and see what I um, what I was looking at here. So let's start with the with the favorite, which was Phantom Vision, I guess. So Phantom Vision is running, you know, it's on the turf. So I figure it runs 14 or 15. Then you have Honey Pants running a 12. Hold on. Oh, wait, am I on the wrong race? Sorry about this. Um, wait a minute. Race 
oh, race 12, sorry about that. That I was just going over that race that I said I wasn't going to go over. So, so race 12, you have Vindictive. Okay, so this is the favorite. Um, certainly nothing wrong with this. I mean, it runs eights, it runs eights, and it's probably going to run another eight. I mean, I can't really argue with it. Actually, it could go forward. It could run like a six too. So um, I hope that I wasn't hallucinating because this is going to be a tough horse to beat. Let's see what let's see what else there is in here. Yeah, Shagger Bay too. Nope, no thanks. Yeah, so untreated. Um, untreated is 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 okay. Um, boy, this is this is one of the favorites I was trying to beat. I could see why, you know, it was running sixes and then it took a little time off and then ran an eight and then a 10. I'm not too thrilled with this whole line. So as a favorite, I don't really like all this all that much. I prefer the other one if I had to pick between the two favorites. So let's see this other thing I was, I was looking at here. Let's see. Forewarned. Okay. So now I see what I was getting. So, so forewarned is definitely, you know, it's definitely kind of a cripple, you know, it's been running like a, a long time. It's got some, some good races. It's got a seven. And here's another good example of what I was talking about. It had been running 12s, 13s, 14s, and 12s. And then all of a sudden it ran up to a seven and then predictively it bounced It ran at 13. I like the fact that it came back and ran an eight and another eight, and then it bounced again, which makes some sense. And also you consider this L so what the L means is that the horse bled. Um, so it's uh, presuming it either gets Lasix or they figure it out. I can't, I don't see any reason why it doesn't run an 80. And so I think that it's probably a little worse than, the, than that first horse. I mean, I, actually, it's probably a lot worse than the first horse, but the, the odds difference, 12 to 1 to 2 to 1, I think makes up for that. So, so I, would, I would probably... I would probably use the, the the five and the one, and if I had to fade one, I think the three is a little is probably the weaker. So I would I would use the five with the one, the one with the five, maybe the five on top of the three, um, and that would be my my approach to this race. So now in the actual the feature in the the black eyed Susan here, I. I there were a couple of couple of things that you can do. There, there were some, the favorites look kind of okay, but th there were some pretty good long shots here. Here's what I wrote down, and then we'll go back to it. I wrote down the four as the best long shot in the race. And then I actually had the nine, and then the three, five is also good values. And then these favorites look good too. So let's let's go through this again and see and see if we can't separate this. So divine hunches for the 15. Um, that's probably not going to be good enough. Missy Greer, 16, probably not going to be good enough. So let's start with this horse, this Miss Year, uh, Yearwood. Um, this is one of those kind of secondary long shots I had at 13, 13 minus. This is a really strong line. Um, done literally nothing wrong. Um, uh, and I think it's very, very live at a, long, as a, at a big price, presuming that this is what you need to win. You could even go forward maybe a little bit. Um, I think it's fine. And here's the midnight stroll. I mean, what's wrong with this horse? I mean, it didn't really do much at two. So then it developed. It ran a 13 minus right out of the gate. And you'd expect it maybe to bounce off of that. But no, I mean, it moved forward. It made a 10 sprinting. It, you know, has a little bit of time off. And I think this horse is extremely live. You know, I think this horse can run anything. I mean, this, who knows? This horse can run an eight. And that wins this race probably pretty easily. So I think this is a this is probably the key here this race. But as as you'll see, let's look at some of these other horses first. So Big Wine, uh, this is another one of those kind of uh, you know secondary long shots I like. And there's nothing wrong with this horse either, right? It ran a 21 and a bunch of 13s, and who's to say it can't go forward again and run like a low an 11? So at a big price, this horse is good. So Luna Bell is, is one of the favorites, and I'm certainly not going to pick on this horse either. You know, it's 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 got this base of all these good numbers at two and then it came right out at three and it ran a nine in the mud and it kind of is circling back and just does nothing but win you know win 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 it's won five races in a row and and the last one was ran a 10 at a distance i mean this is this is a strong horse you know um 
and and I, I could see why it's probably the favorite. Well, let's see. Luna Bell's not even the favorite. I mean, it's nine to two. Um, let's just see. Let's just see what this favorite looks like. This Adir Manor, because I do remember liking it a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, distinctly possible. Not really. Uh, Candy light. Not really. So interstate daydream. This is the one I, this is another one I kind of marked off, but it's only six to one. I don't really need this now that I think about it. I mean, it, it ran an 18, 19 to two. It ran an 11 first lace six, coming back at three, which is really good. Um, then it bounced, which you would expect, you know, maybe this is all right, actually, but I don't think that at what you call it at six to one, it's any better than the four. You know, I still think this four is, is, is the value here, but let's take a look at this other favorite because this other favorite looks pretty good. So, so Adair, Adari Manor ran a 15, a 19, then it just at Lasix just popped and it ran a nine. And you would expect it to bounce, but no, it ran forward again and ran an eight. And then a little bit of an off race to 11. This is extremely tough, you know? Um, and this is what I was afraid of. I was afraid that these favorites were just too good. Um, but let's see. Favor. Favor reminds me of those other two horses from earlier in, the, in this race where they, you know, they had the pair of 13s. So I regard Favor as very similar to those. So what you have here is you have Favor at eight to one from the outside compared to these, you know, the three and I guess the, who was the other one like that? And the five, five is the in, three and the five of the inside. So I, 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 and there are bigger prices. So I would prefer the three and the five over the 12. That makes any sense. And then it's just a question of, do you really think the four can beat these two tough favorites? It's tougher than I thought. You know, when I first looked at it, I really thought the four was extremely strong and a strong standout. But more I'm looking at it, I mean, these these are two hard hitting horses, the six and the ten. I'm still gonna do it. I'm still, you know, just because I can't help it. I'm still gonna play the four, but it's not as if I it's, ex, it's extreme lock or anything like that. But I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use the four with probably the six and the ten. If you want to know the truth, so uh, that is the um, that is Black Eyed Susan Day, which is today. And I'm gonna I'm gonna timestamp this and go straight straight on to the Preakness uh, day, which is tomorrow. And you could you know watch for scratches and things like that because the stuff can happen. Obviously, watch for weather. It doesn't. I don't think there's gonna be bad weather, but if so, everything kind of changes. Watch for scratches, all that stuff. If there's any big changes, I'll try to go into the Discord and 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 comment on it. So let's take a look at the Preakness. First race, uh, I have no value here. Uh, Preakness stakes, uh, Preakness uh, day. I, if you want to know the truth, I, I, I put down one, four, five, six, seven, eight, no value. So you don't have to wake up at 1030. However, uh, you might want to wake up at 1030 and use all those horses if you want to be alive in the pick five, because I do have strong value, I think, in race two. So race two, I wrote down three, five, seven, eight. Um, and all of those look really long. So we're going to do the same thing as we did for the others. We're going to, we're going to go back and take a look and see where this came, where, the, where this come from, where, excuse me, where this came from. So on the fleet with 14s, uh, that's obviously pretty good. So gentleman Joe. So again, you know, you getting a little lesson on cheap theory here. So gentleman Joe ran a 13 and ran a 12, another 12 and 11, really strong. And it's got these two off races and it's just, and the question is, do you forgive these or do you just think there's something wrong with it? Just like DFS, it all comes down to ownership. You know, I'm willing to forget about it if this, the price is right. And from what I see, it's got a really strong morning line. Of, of uh, It's going to be really long. So I'm willing to forgive those two races. Um, the poser, no. Accelerator, no. Ain't to beer cold. Uh, similar, but maybe this one's a little bit better. Because the same thing, it ran a 15s at two, it ran, you know, didn't do much at three. Then all of a sudden, you know, as it developed into a four-year-old, look at this, it got a 17, a 13, an 11. And remember, it's supposed to bounce, right, eventually. And that's what happens. Uh, it ran a 24. And I have no issues with playing this horse to run another 11, which could be good enough. And you look at this, and it's 10 to 1 um, 
That sounds good to me. Let's move on to uh, Armando. Pretty strong horse here. Um, 11, 14, 12. It's a little short um, at three to one, but make no mistake. I mean, it's certainly, I, I would certainly not toss it in exactness or anything like that, but I wouldn't key it. I think that other one is just as, I would say just as likely, but given the odds, I think I like that other one. Uh, Banan Joe with 15s and 16s. Oh, just okay. It's not going to run that 11 that, that I really want. Oshaga Ray too. So this one's got a pair of 12s. Certainly nothing wrong with this. Eight to one. Sounds good to me. Um, and then we look at the other one I liked, which is Boss Logic's a little fishier. So it had good numbers at two. It ran a 15. I, and then it made a 14. Then it took a layoff and you think it's kind of crippled, you know, it runs like the worst ever. Then it takes a little bit of time off. And after one prep, it, it, it bounces, it, 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 it rocket ships to a new all time high of a 12. Then it bounced and then it had another off race and it got claimed. I don't know. Maybe this is the worst of the long shots. I liked actually now that I'm looking at it. So yeah, I would say, well, then there's the rapper who is, you know, solid enough, but short. Is that the, is that the, uh, is that another short one? Let's see. Uh, yeah. Seven to two. So I think that I would change my mind. I don't really think I like the eight all that much. So it's going to be for me, the three, the five and the seven as the long shots. Um, and I'll probably key those and pick threes and pick fours, pick five, stuff like that. But I'm not going to completely toss this for the six. I mean, the six is pretty, pretty solid. And even the nine is not bad. So, um, don't take too big of a stand with these horses, but I certainly the the three and the five and the seven as well are are really really good values here. All right, race number three, I have kind of an asterisk asterisk on somebody, so let's take a look at this. So I have the this is what I wrote down: eight, and then the one two five to beat the four. So you have this four at four to five morning line. So if you can beat this thing that's a really really strong thing so let's just take a look at what are we looking at race number three so let's go back so trash talking larry uh let's see it ran a 19 on the turf in its first time on the turf got certainly no issues with it so i could play it to run another 19 maybe even a little better i'm not sure but we'll keep it in there um he was one of those I had as a secondary horse to beat the four. So let's see if this can really beat the four for openers. Let's go look. Uh, well, first, let's look at Hachure. Um, boy, I had this one as one of those to beat him also. Yeah, so it's got a 24 on the turf and a 21. Then it ran a 17 on the dirt. And then an off race where it was scheduled to run on the turf. How do you know that? Because a cue means that it was originally scheduled for the turf and moved off. So obviously they think that this horse is a good turf horse, um, which I'll give them a benefit of the doubt. So you want to squint a little bit. I could play this horse to run a 17 or a 19. And if that's going to beat the four, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's good news. Let's take a look. Um, General's duty. Uh, well, who was the horse I had to beat him? General's duty actually looks and that's just a little slow. 21 minus 21. That's not going to be good enough, I don't think. So this is the this is the favorite, right? So Evan Hart. It, look, look, it ran a 19 at two, which I mentioned earlier is you had to give it a little bit extra credit. And then it came right back and it ran a 16. So so yeah, it's definitely faster so far than those other horses, but it is first time on the uh, going a distance these kind of lighter numbers, again, just kind of indicates that it was sprinting and this race at a mile and a 16th. So if you got a horse that's that's three to five or less, that that is never been the distance, uh, you're gonna try to beat it, but let's just see. Again, even if I give it a 16, um, let's just see, uh, because those other horses, maybe they can't quite get there, but it's close. And given the fact that it's the first time Evan Harlan's running a distance, I'm gonna try to beat it. Let's take a look. Um, then there's Amarillo. I didn't mark him down for some reason. Oh, he's nine to two. Yeah, he's the other one. I had to beat him. 
to beat the favorite. So this horse ran a 17, but the difference is this horse ran it at a distance, which is a really, really big edge. So I actually feel as though Amarillo is just as good as the favorite. And it's nine to two, so it's not that long, but just to show you that, that the favorite is pretty vulnerable here. So the bad to the bones, no. Hard traveler, no. So here's here's the one I like. So airspeed velocity, there's literally nothing wrong with this. It had a 19 first out. Then it ran first at a distance and ran a 17. Literally no reason why it can't run another 17 or even better. And at 10 to one, I mean, let's go. I mean, not that it's a lock again, but but you play play these horses, you know, you play this horse at 10 to one and this horse at four to five time and time again. The guy playing the four at four to five is going to be broke eventually. And the guy playing the eight at 10 to one is going to be rich eventually. Is it going to be tomorrow? I don't know. But I definitely like the the, the four, is, uh, the eight is a key here. So I would go the eight, then play the one, two, five. I wouldn't play the four at all. Um, okay, uh, moving on to the fourth race. The fourth race, I actually marked here as being value. I had the five on top of the six and the seven. Uh, and then I put value. I don't know what the great value is there because let's just see. Disco Pharaoh is the favorite. Let's see how good full authority is because I don't remember him being that good. Let's let's take a look. So you have War Toxin with a 10 and a 15. I mean, and the, look, it bled. Remember that L? Okay. Um, so you want to give it a 10? Maybe. Then you have So Alfred James. You remember him from Derby Day, for those of you that, that, that hear from my analysis. I said this was the fancy play syndrome horse. You needed a six to win this race. And uh, I hope it, I was hoping it would, but man, a 12, it was, it was fine. Um, threes over deuces with like a 10. That's uh, could probably get around a 10 or a 12. That's, that's okay. Boy, why do I think this is such a good horse to try to beat? This horse looks really good. Uh, Disco Pharaoh with an 11 and a 10. I mean, it's the favorite, but I haven't seen anything yet that's beating this in this race. So let's just take a look. Oh, there it is. Oh, excuse me. So full authority is almost kind of a lock, right? It's got a pair of eights and it's got to beat the favorite who's got tens. And then, yeah, and you got Mr. Phil who's got three eights. So, and then you got Jackson Trailer with an eight. I guess that's where that was coming from. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with myself. I think that the uh, five, six, and seven are the value here to beat the four. Um, so that's what I would probably do. I would probably key the five just because it's longer. Um, and then use six, seven, and probably wouldn't play the four just on principle. But I mean, he looks fine, but just not at that price. Uh, okay, race number five. I put down the four as a lock favorite. Um, you guys want to see what a lock favorite looks like? I mean, it may as well. Uh, race five, you have out of sorts with a 16. Crystal Cliffs with a 12. Then you have Scarmia with an 11. And then you have this thing with like kind of a nine. So it's, it's, um, can it bounce? Well, maybe, right? I mean, look at it this way. Last time it ran a nine, it bounced. I mean, that makes some sense. And the time after that, it ran a nine. You didn't give it a chance to bounce because you gave it a layoff. So I don't know, maybe, maybe this can be beat. If this thing bounces and runs like 11 and 11, then these other horses are kind of in play. Am I going to talk myself into betting against this thing? Yeah, maybe. Uh, in a hurry, that's not the one that's going to get there. This one's not going to get there. Yeah, that's the problem. Like Even if it bounces, who's beating it? Um, maybe Scarabay or maybe Crystal Cliffs. What are their prices? Well, Crystal Chris, that's terrible, two to one. Maybe you could play the three. I mean, if you're really on tilt and you need to play a long shot and technical analysis goes up at one to five and Scarby is maybe 15, 12 to one. Yeah. Okay. But uh, four is tough. Um, but I think three would be the one I would play to be. Okay. Um, let's go on race number six. So race six, this is what I wrote down. I wrote down four, maybe eight, nine. So four to one is not exactly earth shattering here. 
Uh, let's and the eleven is five to two. Let's 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 again. Let's go back and take a look. And I am actually happy I'm doing it this way. Um, so witty banter, uh, kind of a cripple. Not worried about him. Trumpet lily, nothing. Vibrancy, vibrancy with a fourteen, and then an eighteen. I'm squinting here, I guess. All right, so Kate's Kingdom, right? This is a solid horse, run 14s, 13s. Got a bunch of 14s. I, I think it just runs another 14. So let's just see if anybody's beating it. Um, it doesn't certainly doesn't look like it. I mean, Murph's got a shot, right? Ran a 19 to two, first time on turf, it ran a 16. So certainly Murph is, is, is live here to go forward. And Volador, yeah, I guess. 15, 16, something like that. See what the favorite looks like. Yeah, Golden Voice, this is no better than, than the one that we liked. And this is on the outside. So, so yeah, I do think the four is, is pretty solid at four to one. I wouldn't bet at five to two, maybe, but at four to one, certainly. And Murph, Volador is not bad, as I mentioned. So I was correct in my initial assessment is that four, maybe eight, nine. That's, that's, that's what I like here. And I wouldn't bet the favorite here from the outside like that. Um, where's race seven? Um, why is it not? Oh, want to exit the page here? What's going on in here? Hang on, let me just pause recording for a second. Okay, so race number seven. Um, I wrote down two over the eight nine. Uh, so the two is eight to one, and then there's Chitara ten to one, and Time Limit six to one. So this is this is that's interesting. So let me see uh, why that is, and we'll we'll consider that Silla is the favorite at seven to two. So that's probably the one we're going to try to beat um, as we go through this. So Street Loot, I mean, 12, 12, I, I can probably going to run another twelve. So that's kind of the baseline. Let's see who's beating that. All right, so Oksana, here we go. So here's the two, run an eight. Could it bounce? Sure. Um, so eight, anywhere from eight to like an 11, certainly in play, but certainly no disputing it's eight. Um, Cinnabunny, nope. Joy's Rocket. Joy's Rocket's sort of solid, not really. Kalosaurus, I mean, it's got an eight. Then a nine, a ten. I, I don't. I don't actually really like this that much. Um, so I don't really like this. Now you have Scylla. So this is the. Was this the favorite? Yeah. So Scylla at seven to two. So this is a horse I would like to. I would like to play at a big odds, right? Because it ran a six. Well, you know, and the, we expected the bounce, right? So it did. It ran a twelve. Then it paired the twelve. So I think that 12 is kind of the floor on this horse. And I think it can run all the way up to a six. So I definitely think it's live, but, but not at a, at a short price. Okay. Uh, Glory Dia, terrible. Um, so Chitara. So this is the one I, pro I brought up before at, at maybe a long shot price. I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's got, but here's the thing that's cool about it. It's got an 11 sprinting. It's got a nine sprinting, then a bunch of bad dirt races because it's bold, then another nine sprinting, and then an off race. Now, when you see a dot, that means it's in the mud. So as long as there's no weather issues, I don't see any real reason why it can't run a nine. So I think it's extremely strong long shot here at 10 to one. So I'm, I, so the two and the eight, certainly makes sense now the other one is is the nine i highlighted so let's take a look at that yeah so time limit it's got a nine back here then a 10 on the turf then a 12 where it bled then back on the turf and then then on a double slop racetrack it ran a seven but then it ran a 16 i mean the horse is obviously a total cripple but it certainly can run an eight or a nine or something like that on its best day so um at six to one, eh, I mean, both eight and the nine are a little fishy, but but I I, I think they're they're very live. So I would say that between the two, the eight, and the nine, I think someone's beating the six. You know, I don't know exactly which one it's going to be, but I think one of them is. So that's who I would use. I would use the two, eight, and the nine in this race. 
Uh, okay, uh, race number eight. I have three, four, five, six, no value. So I'm gonna trust myself on that. Race number nine. Uh, okay, so I wrote down one, two, seven, with the two being kind of okay. So let's take a look. So this is either gonna be a no value or the two Lightning Larry is gonna look good or better than I thought. So let's take a look. So Cogburn is one of the favorites, and this is this is a, this is looks really good. I mean, it's got a fourteen. Then it you know took time off after that that number, and then it ran a ten right back, and then it actually moved forward off of that. It ran a seven. I mean, it could bounce, but this is a this is a fast horse. So here it is. So Lightning Larry right off the bat at ten to one. I mean, let's go. I mean, here's the thing. The issues are, as we've kind of gone over, it ran a 16, a 13, then it ran a big number, it ran a nine. And, you know, you might can say that it's probably going to bounce. What it has going for it is a couple of things. Number one, it's got a little bit of time to recover, which is not, which is a good thing, actually. And the fact that this is the first time it was on Lasix F9 with an F, maybe the Lasix is just something that makes this horse that much better. And so maybe that nine is not as much of an effort as it could be. So I think the nine is very repeatable here. And if that's the case, um, yeah, 10 to one, it looks good. Uh, then there's old Homestead to be super, I mean, nothing wrong with this horse, you know, very solid, hasn't done a thing wrong. Um, and then there's wheel and springs. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, it's got, a, it was nothing, was nothing but 20s. And then it went 16, 10, 6. Um, you know, I, I would probably fade this one. I would think that this horse has to bounce. It would just have to. Um, so at 4 to 1, I, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I can play that at 4 to 1. So. so for me, I would go back and key this too. I think the 1 is really solid. I think the 5 is really solid as well. Um, but I would, um, I would, I would, I would play the two, um, play the two with the one, five, one, five with the two. And, uh, I would, I really would avoid the seven. Okay. Race number 10. I wrote in race 10. Let me go get back to it on the, on the pad here. Race 10. I wrote one three and four value so okay i'll actually i remember this race so this is a wide open race and i i'm pretty sure i was forcing this value in, but let's just take a look so it's a turf sprint excuse me it's a turf race in a mile and let's just get right let's get, let's get right to it here so determined kingdom had a 15 at two and then it came back and it ran a 13 on the dirt where it bled which is really strange um so it could certainly run another 13. Uh, it could bounce. It could run a 15. There's a lot of things it could do here, but it's really long. So let's go. Let's see if there's anything that's really a lock here that's going to prevent it from winning it from 113. Uh, locomotive, no, nothing really. Uncaptured spirit. I mean, this is one of the long shots I had here. This is, th what has this done wrong? It's got a 16, 16, 17, 19. It ran a 14 first on the turf. Yeah, it's going long for the first time, but it's only a mile and it's a three-year-old. Any, uh, I think this is really live. And once again, unless someone's going to run, it's going to guarantee me they're running an 11 at, as the favorite. I'm going to play these types of horses. Now you have, wow, what a summer. I mean, what's wrong with this at 15 to 1? 19 to 17, it ran a 15. Again, could certainly go forward and run a 13. It could run another 15. So that's what I first looked at is these three values. Now let's see if these other horses that, are, you know, is there anybody that much better? So ready to perform is the favorite. It looks, it looks certainly fine, right? It's got a 20 to 16 to 14 at a distance. Remember we talked about that. So that's important. That's coming off a little layoff. So it's probably developing. It could certainly run well, but as the favorite, is it better than those other two? I don't think so. Um, then let's scroll down here. Riot House is certainly okay, but is it any better than these long shots? Um, shake them loose. I get nervous about a horse like this because it did have that one off race on the turf. And it's been really improving here. 
Um, I don't know why they're putting him on the turf. I, I'm a little afraid of this. Um, I think may, maybe it is bred for the turf somehow, which is why they put him here in the first place. So I might just use him. Um, then you have crabs and beer, who's fine, but it's 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 only six to one, right? How is this any better than these others? Um, Joe is is one of the favorites, I think. And same deal. How is this any better than the others? So um, this is this is I'm I second myself. I I would use. I would key the one, three, and the four. They're inside, so they're going to probably get a point in, in wide uh, adjustments from all these favorites out here. I mean, this 10 at three to one is terrible. I mean, it's a terrible favorite. So uh, I think it's a really good race to key these horses. Uh, all right, race 11, I just, okay. All right, so I don't know whether this is a better, the best bet of the day. Uh, because it's either that or the Preakness stakes. We'll get to that. But I wrote down the four asterisk in this race at four, 15 to one. So let's, let's go back and take a look at it. Um, let's see what these horses need to run. We'll go through them all. So Ethereal Road's got a 13, 13, 15. So it's probably going to run a 13. Maybe it could, it could go forward anywhere between 11 and a 16, maybe. Golden Eyes, nothing. Write it on ice, nothing. So here you go. You have Addison Court. So you have the same issue, right? So it ran a, a 16, the 17, 17, and then it made a really big move and it ran a nine. Um, so the question is, is it going to bounce? I mean, probably, but maybe not. And at 15 to one, I'm probably willing to, to excuse it, not excuse it, to hope it doesn't bounce. Um, but let's just see. Right, let's just double check and make sure there's no huge lock here that I forgot about. B Doc sprinting at nine. It's a, it's a little bit worse, right? Because it's sprinting. And look at B Doc is five to two. Let's. I mean, look at those two different. Look at those two horses. I mean, this is terrible. I mean, this this is this is B Doc is the exact same horse as Addison, right? They both made big moves to 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 get to a nine. The only thing that's different, honestly, is that Addison Poor did it at a distance and B Hawk didn't. Like if you bet B Doc here as the favorite, you just really hate money. I mean, even just to compare it with the four. Then you have Mr. Jefferson, 15, good skate with a 14. Unikai is fine with a pair of 11s, but it's sprinting. I mean, is this going to be long? Unikai, if it's it's only four to one, I mean, let's see what else here. You have Brooklyn Diamonds, not that great. Rugs is Rugs is pretty good. You know, it's got a fifteen at two. It came back and it ran at twelve. It's got some time. I guess this is probably the next horse. So actually, yeah, I do like the Rugs at ten to one. So I would use both of those. I would use the Rugs and the the four so maybe maybe the um uh maybe the rugs uh maybe the four isn't just a total standout so i would probably use the four and the ten in that race Um, so there you go. I think this is a really, really key race. I think you want to play both these horses. I think you really want to beat that favorite. Um, okay. So moving on to race number 12, and then we're getting to the Preakness in a second race 12, I thought was pretty bad. I, I just had two, three, six, seven, nine, uh, if that means anything to you. So I, I would not take any stand in that race and use them all. So let's get to the uh, the Preakness Stakes, where you know I I I think there's an extreme standout here, and uh, I'll let, I'll let you guys you know we'll just we'll just go through let's we'll go through horse by horse. We have nine horses, and let's let's just see what we have. Here. So 
And just to just to reiterate, we have, I mean, the favorites are early voting, secret oath, epicenter, then simplification is next, and everybody else is really long. So let's 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 see what we have here. So race 13. So you have simplification, who I think is extremely poor. You know, you 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 it ran a 14 at two, it ran a 10, then an eight. You know, so it's going someplace and it's just been kind of just just struggling, man. You know, it ran a 10 and it ran an 11. I mean, you could excuse the 10 because you're supposed to bounce and the 11. I mean, I expect a little better. And then it ran a 12. Now, look, that wasn't the Kentucky Derby. So it's possible that you could excuse it being a mile and a quarter. It's coming back in two weeks. I, I don't know, man. I don't I, I think at best it runs at 10, but I, I am not really into this horse. But let's just see. Let's put him in a baseline. Let's say you need a 10. Okay. Creative Minister, nope. Uh, Fenwick, nope. All right, so here's the first favorite, one of the first uh, short price horses, uh, Secret Oath, it's 9-2. Like it. I mean, there's literally nothing wrong with it, except that it's a filling it could bounce, right? So it ran a 13 at 2. Then it paired that pretty easily, went forward with an 11 very strong, a little bit of an bounce, no problem. Comes back, runs another really strong race with a nine. I mean, could it run another nine? Sure. Uh, I might play it to bounce though. So maybe a, maybe another nine, but probably something more like an 11 or maybe worse. So it's fine. And it's certainly just as good, if not better than the, than the, than the one. So he's certainly, she's certainly a contender. So early voting is, you know, there's literally nothing wrong with this horse. I mean, it's got a 14 and then it's got a 16 and then it's got a seven. And it's, it's not, it didn't run in the Derby. So it's not back with no rest, which is, you know, it's tough to do, you know, tough to, tough to win like that. Um, and I, I literally have no issues with this horse at all. I mean, it's, it's seven to two, um, you know, maybe it's a little short, but it's certainly, certainly the most likely winner, at least at this point. Um, in the analysis, happy Jack, ugh, disaster. Um, then you have arm, arm, at, I'm not going to bet you. Okay. Like it's just too, it's never, it's never beating that, that, that other horse that's going to run a nine, uh, seven or a nine or something like that. Uh, seven to two. So, so far that seven to two shots kind of a lot. So now you have epicenter. So epicenter is six to five and, and let's take a look at this. So epicenter has really done nothing wrong, right? It, it's got a 19, it's got, then it's got a 12 and 11 and two. These are really strong races. Then it paired the 11, like it's nothing. Then it broke through that. It ran an eight, which is, you know, I mean, this is a really good horse. And then it ran forward and it ran a six. And then, you know, it was, it was the favorite, I think at the Kentucky Derby off of this line, but it's interesting, you know, as, as I talk about, when you run these big efforts, you know, you, you do rate to bounce somewhat. So this 11 was, 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 um, was, was, I don't want to say expected, but, but, you know, listen, they tried to give it enough time off that six to, 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 to account for maybe bouncing. So I, I do give props for, for the trainer. I mean, you can tell that this horse was, was aimed for this, for that Kentucky Derby, right? Um, it was spacing its races out. It gave itself a little time just not quite good enough. You know, it just ran, it did not run well. I mean, it ran 11. Can it run a, another, can it, can it come back to the six again? Yeah, maybe. Um, so I think it's just as good, if not better than that set, that horse with the other seven. So I think the two favorites are really, really strong here. So let's just take it this, that this last horse is last 20 to one shot. To, okay. I'll be done in five minutes. I'll, I'll take her. It's going to be five minutes. So, uh, so unless this last 20 to one shot can run this, I think we're stuck to the favorites. So let's just take a look at this. Oh, oh, really? So you have Skippy Longstocking, who has done literally nothing wrong. It's got a 14 and two, then it's got a 12 broke through, then it's got a seven and it's got time into this race. Could it bounce? Sure. Could it run another seven? Sure. Is it 20 to one? Yep. So this is going to be the key in this race. Uh, this is, this is what you play horses for. This is why you gamble and skipping long stocking at 20 to one is just something you just have to keep. 
Um, is there anything wrong with the eight? Nope. Is there anything wrong with the with the five? Nope. Four is okay too. But this is what I'm doing. Key skippy long stocking and lose most of the time, but not enough of the time where you shouldn't be betting. And that will do it for the uh, Preakness uh, and, and Black Eyed Susan uh, preview. Good luck, everybody.